uh, welcome to the Enhancing Clinical Practice stream of this SNOMED CT Expo 2020. My name is Nikki Ingram and I'm a senior terminologist at SNOMED International. I'll be moderating today's session. Please use the Q&A box to type your questions to the presenter. Questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Karen Horridge, who is a consultant paediatrician specialising in paediatric disability in the northeast of England for uh, South Tyneside and Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust, and who will be presenting Using SNOMED to Improve Outcomes for Disabled Children. Dr. Karen Horridge, please proceed. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. So I'd like to share with you uh, the journey that I've been along towards improving outcomes for disabled children underpinned by SNOMED CT terminologies. So the key message of, uh, messages of today's presentation are to emphasize how if we're to use at SNOMED CT, we need this to be underpinned by harmonization of terminologies so that we all know what we mean by what we say. And this is essential to underpin data capture. Disabled children, more than most, have very many needs. These are multifaceted and all needs must be made visible if they are to be addressed in clinical practice. Complexity of needs can be clearly articulated and SNOMED CT can help in this regard. We can then have evidence-based care pathways designed based on what we know from population data so that we can evidence our baseline against which we can measure whether our interventions are making the positive difference that we aspire to and achieve better outcomes. So the first term that we need to clearly understand is what we mean by disability. So I use the World Health Organization's conceptual framework of disability otherwise known as the ICF, which means the International Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health. And you will see that this conceptual framework lends itself beautifully to SNOMED CT. Because whereas something like the uh, ICD framework would help us in describing the health conditions and body functions and structures, it wouldn't help us capture information about those wider issues, about the child or young person's activities that they want to join in with, their participation, which means their ability to be present in an activity and actively engage in it. We're able to describe using SNOMED CT those environmental factors that might otherwise be disabling, not just how wide the doors are or whether there's a ramp or not, but also attitudes amongst other people and in policies and practices. There are then those personal factors which come to bear, which might make a child or young person resilient or, on the other hand, make the more vulnerable um, to disabling uh, factors. So all of these interplay together uh, to decide how disabled a person is at any point along their journey, which can be different. So this really lends itself well to SNOMED CT. I'd like to roll the clock back now to a dark, dark room in one of the basements of an NHS England building in London where I was present with a range of other experts and parent carers and the then National Health Service in, uh, 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 of England's National Clinical Director for Children and Young People said to us why in this 21st century in the fifth richest nation in the world that we still not know who or where disabled children are in our communities or what their multifaceted needs are. 
So this rang in my ears and I saw an opportunity to try to do something about this. We'd been collecting data in Sunderland where I work for quite some time and collecting this in very structured clinical letters. And we'd done uh, some writing up about this, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Coincidentally, at this point in time, the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges in the United Kingdom were conducting a SNOMED CT project and wanted volunteer specialties to participate to develop terminology sets. Also at this time, NHS Digital in the United Kingdom was developing a children and young people's health services data set, the SIS. This has since evolved into the community services data set, which now covers the whole lifespan. So there are various strands coming together. So then, as I mentioned, we structure our uh, clinic lessons letters which are all visible in the patient electronic medical record. So the first thing I did is poured over um, over 8,000 of these um, belonging to 2,000 children and young people and selected the 83 commonest terms, not just describing the health conditions of the child, but also aspects of uh, environmental factors and uh, activities and desire to participate. These 83 terms were then augmented by a national working group of which I was part and had inputs from other paediatricians, from uh, allied health professionals and very importantly from a parent carer of a disabled child to keep us really grounded um, to make sure that the terms we were using were meaningful. There were then two other working groups, a community paediatric working group and a general paediatric working group that came up with separate lists of common terms that they wanted to, us to consider. Then the fun really started uh, when we needed to be moderated by the NHS uh, terminologists who helped us to debate, discuss and agree so that we had a final list of 296 terms that we wanted to encourage people to use. So it's one thing identifying the terms, in order to get people to use them, we need to explain very clearly what we mean by the words we say when we're using that term and any synonyms, which of course SNOMED CT lends itself to very well also. And in the NHS at that time, paediatricians working with disabled children in particular were being encouraged to be very outcome focused and to um, make very clear what outcomes they were aspiring to with their interventions and what the action planning would be. So to try to uh, square the circle, if you like, and encourage people to collect accurate data, uh, we dangled the carrot of offering some suggestions for outcomes and actions that clinicians might want to consider along the way. So then, uh, we capture data, we clinicians capture the data and code it at the point of care. We enter it in the electronic medical record. This then flows into our NHS Trust Secure Data Repository and can be retrieved locally to inform audits or to consider any potential participation uh, in research studies. And we can flow the data seamlessly behind the scenes into the community services data set. So it's really important we feel that the data we capture is meaningful to families. And so we've co-developed a tool with input from the multidisciplinary team and from families called the Traffic Light Tool or Health, Functioning and Wellbeing Summary. This starts on one side by celebrating what's going well, otherwise the disability club it can become a long list of everything the child can't do, which is disempowering. We then have a box where we encourage the family to record what they think would make their life easier for them to be able to participate better in the activities they want to do. Then there's a box for questions and concerns. And on the flip side, there's a list of common health conditions, common areas of functioning that might be affected, and common environmental factors. And the family are encouraged on the day of the clinic, usually in the waiting room ahead of time, 
um, to complete whether there are no concerns, some or serious concerns. And then the voice of the family and the priorities of the family are brought to inform the consultation. So then we have our clinical consultation as usual. And then at the end of the consultation, we use an electronic medical record called Meditech version 6, which is an American system and has the added strength of our systems coordinator locally having been able to design bespoke interfaces for us. So what's been important for us is to be able to have the clinician doing the least possible work in a busy clinic to easily be able to capture the data. So all I have to do is click on the abbreviations that are intuitive and easy to understand uh, that apply to the particular patient. And I scroll through the different screens and if there are junior doctors or others that don't know what the terms mean, we click on the protocol button at the bottom which brings up the glossary. So we just keep clicking and it takes less than 30 seconds now to click on all the needs of even the most complex patients. And as I say, this uh, doubles up as a booking out slip for the clinic. So we say when we want to see the patient again, if we do, and uh, which particular clinic and after which time interval, we then enter once our unique PIN number. And then that's the clinician's data collection job done. And the data can poodle off into the data repository um, uh, to be used again. So what are the outcomes of this data capture? Well, I think we've now got a much better grasp and understanding of the multifaceted needs of the disabled children for whom we provide care. Our care pathways have been redesigned based on real data rather than a finger in the air that, that used to happen previously. We're able to comply with the mandate to flow diagnostic data to NHS Digital's Community Services data set underpinned by Snowmed CT. And another spin-off is we've been able to work with NHS England uh, using the disability complexity scale based on our data work as a currency model uh, for services for disabled children, which is currently in pilot. So what's this disability complexity scale? Well, all it is is simply adding up the number of health conditions that might apply for a particular child, the number of family reported issues, the number of technology dependencies and whether the child needs round the clock care or not. And this can convey an awful lot more information than just saying this child's needs are complex. Now NHS England were quite taken with this model um, because as you can see, this is a graph showing mapping of the number of needs. We've got one to four needs here, five to ten needs, five to ten needs plus technology dependencies, five to ten needs round the clock care, and so forth through to the most complex children and young people who have got more than 11 individual needs plus technology dependencies plus a need for round the clock care. And this graph is specifically looking at children with special educational needs and disabilities in the different subgroupings. So the reason the model is like this is because most children are clustered at the lower end, which ultimately, if the model runs through to be linked to tariffs, will be linked to lower tariffs. But very importantly, the model allows us to articulate how many children are in which grouping and to make visible those children and young people and burgeoning young adults going on to transition to adult services who have highly complex needs are going to need those packages of support and care and technology dependencies and even need for round the clock care on an ongoing basis. how we uh, set about empowering clinical data capture at the point of care and have published in archives of disease in childhood. We've also written up how we set about quantifying multifaceted needs and developing the disabilities terminology set and disabilities complexity scale. And then how we set about getting others to do the data capture in other settings and evidence that this is feasible uh, without a lot of additional resource. And we validated the complexity scale. 
So I believe that uh, outputs from such data capture at the point of care will transform how we think about the needs of our patients. They will allow us clinicians to design services that meet identified needs and ultimately will be able to give us an opportunity to measure our baseline and then evidence the outcomes that we achieve from our interventions. So the next steps is we're building on our original paediatric terminology set. I now chair the Informatics for Quality Committee at the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health in the United Kingdom. And we're currently uh, working with subspecialty groups to include uh, more terminologies and we're up to over 2000 at the moment and we will be requesting a new SNOMED CT terminology paediatric set and this is exciting work and we're collaborating with partners in New Zealand who are on a similar journey. We want to be able to promote consistent use of the harmonised terminologies that we come up with to underpin data collection moving forward and to be a platform for future research. We then need to unblock those information governance barriers that will then enable us to map across data we capture in health with data captured in social care, in mental health, in primary care and other data sets so that we have a truly holistic picture of the needs of disabled children and young people. And you can see I've used the exemplar of disabled children here, but you can see how this model could be applied to other vulnerable groups and indeed to all patients attending outpatient settings. We'd want to continue to promote the value of data capture and coding to underpin quality healthcare and evidence more equal opportunities to better outcomes. And as I've said, this allows uh, for a more equitable access to research ultimately. So disability is indeed multifaceted, but all these multifaceted needs can be captured, documented and underpinned by SNOMED CT codes as the first step to making them visible and making them more likely to be met. If we harmonise the terminologies that we use across settings and over time, we'll be able to make more meaningful comparisons. It will only be when we've got full population data capture that the quality and equality of outcomes for children and young people can be evident. If you're interested in reading more about our journey towards our paediatric terminology SNOMED CT set, um, our college website has further information, including some little videos. Um, uh, and also there is a, a case study on NHS Digital's uh, website also. Thank you very much for your kind attention and I'm happy to take any questions. So, oh, uh, thank you to our presenter, Karen, uh, for the really interesting discussion and for sharing. And now we've got a little bit of time for some questions and answers. Um, Karen, you're available to answer the questions. Um, I see that one's come in on the live Q&A um, from Luke Roberts, uh, says it's a very interesting presentation. Is the paediatric terminology reference set used available for use currently? Is this reference set specific to paediatric disabilities? Are you, are you able to answer, Karen? Are you on mute? No, I think I think you're on mute. I'm not sure if we can hear you. And we're just going to give Karen a minute to become available for to answer some questions. Um, I, I have a list and um, a questions come in. Just getting audio up 
And if anyone does have any questions, please type them in to the Q&A box. We'll just, just giving Karen a minute. I think she's just having to log out and in. Um, I can answer Luke's question that the uh, paediatric reference set is not yet published and hoping to release it in 2021. Yeah, if anybody's got any more questions to Karen, she's hoping to. Um, no, I'm I'm sure Luke that you'd be able to email Karen directly. Um, she she works for Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust. Can you hear me now? Now. Yes, that's great, Karen. Thanks for doing that. Um, and you answered Luke's question. Um, I, re I read out the answer that the paediatric reference set is not yet published and we you hope to release it in 2021. That's right. um, is it it's specific? To pe oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah um, it's carry on. progress and it involves all uh, subspecialties of paediatrics. So as you can imagine, the work got kind of halted because of the pandemic, because the subspecialty groups were being redeployed into gen more general and other activities. Uh, so we have slowed slightly. The original 296 terms are available, but I'm not sure that they're still published on the NHS digital um, site because we had to take down the paediatric terminology set so that we can plan and in time replace it with the much, much bigger paediatric uh, terminology set. And is the reference set specific to paediatric disabilities? It's, no, the reference set is, is, is paediatric wide, so it's right. all the okay. specialties yeah. of paediatrics. So the original 296 terms that we had described the needs of disabled children with a high level of granularity for all children at high level. So everything was in there for all children, but only the, the higher level terms. So we hope that in the new, much more detailed uh, terminology set, that it will be usable by a much broader range of practitioners. Thank you. And do you use a clinical decision support tool based on the data? Not at this time, but in the fullness of time, we would hope that we would be able to do that. Um, I mean, I've done quite a lot of research myself based on the data with really significant findings that I think will impact on clinical practice. And I think the utility of having that data available uh, to underpin audit and, and quality improvement projects and research cannot be underestimated. I agree. And um, there's a question from Sadie Lanes. Where can we find out more information about the community services data set? Um, so the uh, NHS Digital website um, has a lot of information about the community services data set and um, NHS providers in England at least are mandated to report to this but not many are flowing data about statistics at the moment. Thank you. Can you still, yeah, yeah, you went, you went a bit faded there, Karen. Can I, I have a list of questions um, as well. That, can I just ask what are the main barriers to clinicians capturing data at the point of clinical care? That question's come in. Yeah, so thank you. Um, the main barrier for my clinical colleagues is that they just simply don't have a user, user interface that is easy for them to use at the point of care. And I think they get uh, very frustrated about this, about not being easily able to capture the data in the way that uh, we have managed to develop in, in Sunderland. And I think that is a major obstacle that we really need a multi-pronged approach to, um, to address. I think 
providers of electronic medical records need to be very mindful of the need for ease of use by clinicians and the importance of data capture and data flow um, in this way. Thank you. Um, have you received much feedback so far? This is uh, another question on the list. <laughs> so feedback about? Um, the project, any um, feedback received? Well, yes. Yeah. So I think there's general great enthusiasm for the development of a terminal and the catch. Already facilitated, um, and I really think it's something that we need to uh, to take forward because it absolutely will transform the quality of clinical care that we can de deliver. And as I said in my talk, the ability to monitor and measure outcomes and evidence them. Thank you. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. I just see if there's any more. Um, Denise has said the previous ref set is still published by NHSD. NHSD. Um, Great. That's the original yes. ref set was based upon outpatient focus. Ready, then they should be able to find that. And uh, just finally, do you have any thoughts on future developments? So I think. We need um, there to be those easy to use interfaces so that all clinicians can capture their data. And I think the next developments after that will just uh, automatically spin out of the data. What we found locally is that it's completely transformed how we work, how we think about our patients' needs, how we think about who we really need to see at secondary healthcare level and who we can safely discharge. Um, it's it made us think about care pathways. It's made us think about the details that inform the information that we can give to families about what to expect for the future. So I think the possibilities are myriad and really exciting looking forward. Thank you. And um, thank you for a great presentation. And unless there's any more questions, I think um, we can end it. And enjoy the expo, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.